Whether it's a lager or an ale Whether it's a stout, light, dark, or pale If you can brew it, Chad can review it It's time for Chad's Beer Reviews He's not quite an amateur, not quite a connoisseur But regardless of the brewer, he's got taste in beer for sure You can tell just by his guy, his guy is a bona fide beer knife So whether it's a porter or an IPA Whether it's from Europe or the USA If you can brew it Chad can review it. It's time for Chad's Beer Reviews. Hey, what's up, guys? My hair, that's what's up. <laughs> Just kidding. Welcome to this episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. Got a pretty special beer tonight. This is a beer that everybody reviewed last August and September when this came out. But you know what? I threw it in the basement and I've been just sitting on it for quite a few months now. This is the Dogfish Head. Miles Davis Bitches Brew, ale brewed with honey and gesho. And there's a whole long description on the side there. It's just thing, it's, it just says bottled in 2010. It doesn't say the month and day and all that stuff. It's a nice looking beer there. I mean, look at that. Just black as night and a nice dark, dark brown. Uh, looks like cream, yeah, cream froth head. I could smell it as, when I was pouring it. It kind of smells like Southern Tier chocolate. It's it actually I think it's more black licorice. It's an interesting mix of like that rich milk chocolate and black licorice. It smells very sweet. Nine percent ABV. I do not smell any alcohol in here. Though that's not that strong of a beer, but yeah, I mean it's so so I'm getting licorice. I'm getting chocolate. No roasted malts or coffee or anything. Alright, so I've been wait, sit, waiting on this for a long time. Let's dig into it here. Cheers. Yeah. That's a good uh, Imperial Stout. Depending on who you ask, some people consider it just an Imperial. Some say it's a Russian Imperial. Um, I don't think it's quite a Russian Imperial, since that's not what they were going for to begin with. Um, but it's got the makings of, of an imperial stout. Um, a rich, rich sweetness, kind of like what I said in the nose, the chocolate, the licorice. Finishing with the, the roasted malts. You don't really smell them, but you definitely taste them. It's a very smooth beer. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's actually not as thick, like as far as the mouthfeel and the viscosity. Um, as those first couple of swigs there. Now that I'm getting into it, it seems to be thinning out a little. So it's, uh, you know, not quite like a Russian Imperial style as this is, I think, misclassified as. It's just more of just like a regular Imperial style. I can even feel like a little bit of carbon f carbonation fizz as it's going across the tongue. <laughs> you can get a little bit of gas stuck in the throat. Um, yeah, so far so good. So. Uh, I'm going to sip on this over the next hour or two and come back with my final thoughts on the Bitches Brew. Alright, to wrap up this review of the Bitches Brew, poet, I don't know. Um, I'm going to go 8 out of 10 on this one. For a while there, I was almost going to go 9, but as I've been drinking it, I noticed that the black licorice flavor at the beginning started to just get kind of cloying. The honey came out much more as it warmed up. And the chocolate turned from like melt chocolate to more of like a bitter dark chocolate. Um, and, the, and the bitterness itself actually started to come out as it warmed up. I get like kind of like a, that like really lightly sweetened coffee, coffee bitterness kind of taste to it. There's no roasted malts in here though. But you know, it's so it's a very, it's interesting and strange at the same time. Uh, that whole first half is a very rich sticky syrupy sweetness the honey the chocolate and the black licorice and the second half is just kind of a general dry kind of bitterness to it uh the alcohol never really rears its head as far as in the taste i mean it could account for the dry bitterness at the end um it definitely rears its head as far as the weight i can definitely feel it but you know i don't think I, this was meant for one person to drink the entire bottle by themselves you know it started out as far as drinkability started out very very smooth 
but it was still kind of fizzy right on the tongue. I could still feel the carbonation. In fact, uh, during the break, I poured it and we just got tons and tons of hit. So it's really impressive that it's been able to maintain the carbonation for you know over a year now. Um, and now that it's getting warmer, it's just kind of like a total sipper. I've been sipping on this for quite a while now. Sucks because like all the lacing kind of went away, but um, yeah. So Doctor Chad, you know, I have mixed feelings on them. I think they make this is definitely a very as their logo is off-centered beer uh, and unique, interesting, but it's not quite a mind blower. I think it would be. It'd be more impressive. If I just had one of these instead of drinking the entire bottle by myself. So um, yeah, I was kind of on the border beer between an eight and a nine, but all said and done. I think an 8, you know, it's almost just as good as a 9, um, but, uh, you know, it's a good beer. I like it. So, that is it for this episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. Thanks to you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's Beer Reviews. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better. Come join us for the second annual Saratoga Brewfest, Saturday, June 18th, 2011 at Elms Family Farm in Boston Spa, New York. Festivities will include live bands and over 40 breweries sharing over 100 beers. Check out saratogabrewfest.com for more information.